After working on a seven-part series on spiritual abuse, I've gained a wealth of knowledge and a new perspective. But most of all, it's caused me to clearly see how silence is complicity. Thus, my silence, though serving me, has not served the masses. So as the universe wills, I am presented an opportunity to come clean. Let me start by apologizing to all that have been affected by what I'm about to address, but suffered long because of my silence. I must also seize the moment to offer my apologies to one person in particular, Elisa Dunn. I know what it is to play a part in a network where victims were created. And to be honest with you, I didn't say anything at all. And it's one of my biggest regrets. It's the reason why I'm really doing this video. Specifically, there are two people that I carry in my heart because I should have spoke up and I didn't. And though I think it's too late to stir the waters now, I want to say to you two specifically, I am so sorry. It will be self-explanatory by the end of this episode why I needed to apologize to Lisa. And by the way, hi, my name is Vincent Terrell Hill. Some call me Buddha. Some call me V. Terrell Hill. And for some of you, you call me Elder Vincent Terrell Hill. I worked with Larry Reed from Larry Reed Live from 2003 to 2018. In that time, I was everything from a personal assistant, executive assistant. I traveled statewide and internationally. But most importantly, I am the creator and originator of the Larry Reed Live Show. Throughout those 15 years, 13 years were spent in a sexual relationship with Larry Reed. For a while, I believed I was the only one, or rather, the only man. However, Larry made me aware after our sexual relationship was over, I wasn't. I will disclose the other men in the church he's had some sort of sexual relationship with outside of me as we move forward. Most of what I say in this video is provable. Everything else I saw with my own eyes are those directly connected to it told me. None of this is secondhand information. You did take my comment about not having your ears in your ass. So it's my students in you. Yes. While he was married, pastoring, traveling the road, working with me on Larry Reed Live, we maintained an ongoing sexual relationship. That, to my knowledge, only he, Shamako Bryant, and myself was aware of from 2005 to approximately 2017 when I cut off the sexual relationship. Shamako didn't like our relationship. I know, but you love both of us. Which one decided him that didn't like our relationship? More on Shamako later. Now you may ask, where did I get these audio clips from? Late night on January the 15th, 2023, Larry drove to my house to have a conversation with me months after him and I stopped communicating because he halted payment on an arrangement agreed upon for years of work I did during my 13 years of service with Larry, the Breakthrough Church, Breakthrough Temple, and all of the iterations thereof, including Larry Live. If you remember January the 15th, 2023, you may also remember Levantre Andrews, he was being interviewed by Tasha Kay, premiering in parts on YouTube, but in full on her website that same night. That night, he texted me out of nowhere wanting to talk and saying he will pay me my money that he owes me. Now, one might feel it was hush money. However, he attributed his desire to talk to a dream he had, and he felt led to text me and to meet with me. Now, speaking of Levantre Andrews, let's go ahead and air this out real quick. If honest, Levantre and Larry would corroborate this one thing. I had no idea Levantre had accused Larry of molesting him two years later. 
To this day, I haven't received a clear answer from Larry or anyone in Larry's camp why no one told me when I was literally the guy that handled all of the, or most of the fires, rather, in the church. When Larry finally told me what happened around 2017 or something like that, 16 or 17, approximately 16 or 17, it was a very super generic story that I believed Levantre was lying because I remember Levantre being a lying teenager in the church. So I just chucked it off and went on about my business. After leaving the Larry Live community in 2018, Someone prompted me, you need to go speak to Levantre. He feels like you helped Larry cover up his story. And I said, huh? So I reached out to Levantre just simply to let him know I didn't find out till many years later. Only to realize that phone call brought me more than what I bargained for. Once Levantre gave me his side of the story, significant parts of it startled me. Because it mirrored the same sexual experiences I had with Larry Reed. See, Larry is a voyeur. He loves to see people naked. Quan recounts a time that Larry uh, purchased him new underwear and wanted to see him in the Levantre underwear. recounted a time where Larry asked him to clean up his room in his underwear. What Levantre didn't know up until now, and he still doesn't know he's hearing this while you're hearing this, I knew he was telling the truth the whole time. Because I too was requested by Larry to do the exact same thing a many a times. Although I wasn't there, I said to Larry, as it relates to Levantre, here's what I said to Larry, either you did something to Levantre, or you provided the inappropriate details of your bedroom fetishes to a young member in the church. Either way, you are dirty, dog, wrong. One of the things that always bothers me about this Levantre is one thing and one thing only. When I talked to him back in 17, 18, he said something um, that was eerily similar to our experience mm -hmm. and I asked you about it and you said that you told him some stuff and yada yada, yada. Mm -hmm. so in my mind uh, even if that was just that there was already a line crossed do you think maybe you can just let, let him have this and just let him filter out filter out so interesting to see. Then what we're talking about in the um, um, Marco said, he said, I, he said, I know you, y'all gonna be talking about other stuff. He said, but you need to ask me some of the things and stuff like this. Make some good what, what to do. But I don't think that would bode well in court because that admission could be seen as, well, if he was having an improper relationship with the assistant, why, why couldn't he have an improper relationship with the young, with the drama? So it's, that's, that's a lie. It shouldn't have happened. And I told Larry explicitly, leave that boy alone. Now let me go deeper. No abuser operates alone right? He or she always has a network of people to help them be who and how they are, which is a monster. No abuser operates alone. There is always a network of people aiding and hiding their secrets and abetting in their schemes and dirty work. If you know you are or were a part of such a network, get out while you can. Shemako Bryant, though he appears nice, is not innocent. In my opinion, you know what's worse than someone who stabs you in the back? That same person who hides the knife and helps you clean the wound. Shemako and Larry were boyfriends before I even got in the picture in 2003. And in my opinion, still maintain some sort of romantic understanding or committed relationship. For those who were around in the church days, 
Mako moved out, and right after he moved out to his own apartment, I moved in to Larry's house. Mako did not like the fact that I was there because he knew Larry would eventually not keep his hands to himself, and he couldn't do anything about it. So guess who had to pay for it because he could not control Larry? I did. Shamako found out about Larry and I when I told him in 2005 during a ride back from Raleigh to Fedville, and here is how it happened. Prior to that, Mako and I, wanting to see each other naked, met at the then church musician's house, Antoine Shepard, while he was out of town. Mako, for whatever reason, had a key to Antoine's house, so we went there, stripped naked. We were young and dumb, giddy and childish, but hey, we did it. I thought it was a good time. We didn't touch each other at the time. We just saw each other naked. However, what I thought was Mako being fun and my friend in reality was him fishing for information on whether or not Larry and I was having sex. He was willing to do anything to find out. And of course, I told it because at the time I didn't know any better. Mako, as late as 2021, is still the same way, sneaky and sexually deviant. Yes, we flirted. We, I'm not, I'm not a superstar in this. He fondled me all the time, playing around, touching me in areas he shouldn't touch me. We've exchanged nudes. The Thursday before the Reformation experience in 2021, Mako masturbated in front of me on FaceTime while I watched. He asked me of my thoughts of a foursome between Larry, Kendall, Locklear, and myself. He said it was a fantasy of his. Well, I guess that's a fivesome or a quadruple or whatever. It's five. He even admitted by being caught by Nathan Locklear's now incarcerated son, Day Day, at a meetup, a gay meetup spot off of Cheshire Bridge Road. Is Mako sweeter acting, portraying way more innocent in comparison to Larry Reed? Yes. But is he worse than Larry Reed, if you ask me? Absolutely. <laughs> now, I need to stop to say sorry to Latrice and Lisa. While at this time you both were being dogged by your ex-husbands for what y'all did or were doing, they did it first and literally continued to do it right up under your noses. And he was going in like, only thing we got in common is X, Y, and Z and this, right, this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. That's not a good look. And yeah, the way you was, try to say, I'm the queen of the family, that, that was degrading. It was disrespectful. The reality is that I don't, their timeline makes no sense to me. Um, when they say the relationship started and it's 